What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, the G20 here, coming at you with another Monster Hunter Rise discussion video. Um, and this discussion will be unlike my first one, where I just talked about my initial thoughts um, <clears throat> for the game. Um, of course, at the time of the, that video, we'd only gotten the trailer, and I know since then, Capcom has had their Tokyo Game Show live stream, which thankfully didn't show a lot. So I have a lot to talk about in this. And I will talk about that um, before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video. But, yeah, that'll be a thing. But, yes, this video will just consist of some of my wants, some things that I want <clears throat> to see in the game. Yet again, not necessarily what's in it. So anything in this video, if it does happen to be true or not true, don't hold me to that. I don't know anything. And at this time, we've only had the Tokyo Game Show... <clears throat> excuse me, live stream that has given us a little bit more uh, gameplay. But as far as monsters, we've got no real inkling about who else is going to be in the game. Um, but yes, I'm going to keep these wants realistic. Now, there are certain... Now, even one of my wants I'm going to put in here probably isn't realistic, but I'm trying anyway because I would really love to see it. But as far as, like, some of the things like... <clears throat> For instance, some of the monsters from the Monster Hunter Frontier games, not happening. I would love for that to happen. I would love to be wrong, but they're not happening. They're not going to um, import those monsters over here, um, at least not in Rise. Maybe like, and there is, maybe in Monster Hunter 6, everybody keeps saying World 2. No, it's not going to be Monster Hunter World 2. It's going to be a Monster Hunter 6, which probably have a different name. Um, but yeah, so... I'm going to try to keep it as realistic as possible. Like I said, there's one thing that I really want that's probably not going to fucking happen, but look, bruh, your boy can dream, okay? But yeah, I'm going to talk about a roster of monsters in particular, because it's mostly going to be monsters. Um, yeah, at least at least right now, like going over everything in my head, I think monsters are the main thing. Now, like I said, there is something that I want back that's probably not going to happen. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just... I'm just going on about that. Like, I know it's probably not going to happen just so I don't psych myself up. But God, if this came back, I would love it. But anyway, without me rambling on, without further ado, let's get into the meat of the discussion. Um, like I said, first off, we're going to talk about what was shown at Tokyo Game Show. All right. What we're going to talk about first is what was new at the TGS Tokyo Game Show. Um, as you know, due to the say of the world, it was all online this year. Um, still kind of salty, no Bravely Default 2 news, but I live, I'll get over it, one day. <laughs> but anyway, so pretty much the quote, at least out of the trailer, quote unquote trailer that they showed, and the trailer that they showed wasn't even a new trailer. It All it was was like 18 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that, not even 30 seconds of new footage. And I hate that because it's like, bro, you could have just had a new trailer. But yet again, because they didn't have anything really more to show, means that who knows? I might call the entire roster, or not the entire roster, but most of the roster with what I want. So I'm like, hey, cool, whatever. I was really hoping um to get this video out before then, but because you know other things that came up, that wasn't that wasn't able to happen. So I'm really glad. I'm kind of glad they didn't show more. But anyway. Enough rambling, let's move on to the trailer. Um, in the first part of the trailer, we get a new... Um, we get to see them, uh, a couple of hunters running on Palamutes while another hunter or hunters are trying to keep up with them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, on the roof using the wire bug. And also, we get to see a little bit more about the wire bug, bug mechanic. We can see that, that on your screen, when you're using the wire bug... Um, this wasn't in the trailer, this was part of the gameplay they showed... Um, but there's like a meter. There are two little orbs that show pretty much your, well, two icons, I should say, that show your wire bug. And when it's used, the, the, like the meter, the, um, the icon will darken or eventually disappear, showing that you can't use it. And I think that might be in order to nerf, um, it, it might be in, a, in response to how kind of overpowered the Clutch Claw is in World. So I think they are kind of trying to limit the wire bug so that that same abuse doesn't happen. 
but yes, yeah, so we learned a little bit more about the wire, but we saw the um the Palamutes running as the hunters as the other hunters who weren't on Palamutes were trying to catch up. Now, one thing we did notice is that um I figured we could customize from one of the running scenes that were in the first tra- this is the first version of this trailer. But here we see that the Palamute that the lead hunter is is riding is damn near armor. It lo- looks like it looks like, like the armor that you can see like medieval horses used to ride. So potentially we're gonna have to armor up our palamutes like we would armor up ourselves or our cats. Also, we see barrel bombs being used, but not in the way that you think. Pretty much the hunter goes up, you know, uses the wire bug to get aerial, and then he throws. Well, he or she, I don't know, it's fit my hunter. I, I wouldn't pay that damn close attention. Then comb over the shit, but anyway. The person then they go on to throw the bomb down so it's not like we just set bombs like we used to a lot of people thought it was alchemy style for monster Hunter generations ultimate but it isn't you can just throw barrel bombs so you don't have to just like sit them somewhere and pray that the monster goes over there and gets them no you can throw them at them which makes them which i believe well it makes them more active i should say so and i'm wondering can we do this all the time or just when we're in the air but that's something that we'll see later we, we can pro- we can probably do both, but, you know, it might be like, okay, if we let, we let you throw these bombs anytime you want, they're going to become overpowered. Next, we see the spider monster, who or what I thought was a spider. I'm still going on the off of it being an eruptor, an, an insectoid monster. Um, but from what we saw in the trailer, it was, like, I originally thought this was a Nursilla. I was wrong. Because it looks like it has a longer neck. Like, like it might retract its head when it's not in battle, but when it wants to, to go against you, it will actually extend its neck. So that's interesting. Um, I can't remember the Japanese name off the top of the head. And that's the thing you really wouldn't notice because it flashes by so quickly. And even in the Japanese, uh, in the English trailer, they didn't say anything about it. But in the Japanese trailer, they actually named it. Um, I can't remember the name of the top. I think it's Yotsubune or, some, or something to that effect. It's it's Gotsu or Yotsu something. Let me see. And one of the more interesting things, we saw the application of the wire bug in not just not just in, in the air, but rather on the ground. We see a hunter who I believe is in Izuchi armor, using who's using a lance, uses it like he like they attach. The wire bug to the monster and it kind of allows them to rush so they attach pull themselves rush past the monsters then after they pass them attach it again to rush back and also what damn near made my jaw drop a hunter with a bow gun i believe it was a light bow gun they attached the wire bug to the monster i believe it was an arzuros it was either arzuros or a tetradon they attached their wire bug to the monster and instead of just pulling themselves toward it, toward it, they were able to sh- kind of strafe and go around it, which was fucking awesome. I'm from what it looks like, it could potentially be that they are actually like specific. Like I can do that. Um, speaking well, speaking of which, so just in case you didn't, well, you didn't know it's about me, but I'm a sword and shield main. So yeah. I'm, I'm wondering, like, are there certain actions you can only perform with a certain weapon, or could I do that with my sword and shield? And kind of like, like if, if a monster's guarding from the front, like, let's say it has a guard a bit attack or something like that, where it's impenetrable in the front, but it's impenetrable in the back. Could I use this technique to quickly get around the monster and come up behind it and actually score some hits? We don't know. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, Nothing really um, new in, in the quote unquote in the in the addition to the trailer. I'm not gonna call it a trailer. It's the same damn trailer with 18 extra seconds. Yet again, we saw like one of those little snooky things full. We saw some more sliding, which is cool, um, but nothing really blow yourself out of the water. Cool. Also, in some of the gameplay they were showing, they also showed that you can get buffs from the endemic life, which we kind of saw with like uh, the pine cones in the Horfrost Reach in Monster Hunter World. But I mean, like, you know, some of the little lemur things that are they're out and about, they will buff you for the entirety of your quest. Um, of course, the buffs probably aren't 
extraordinarily big. They're probably like really t- like quote unquote tiny percentages. But hey, that that could add up when it comes to your defense, your attack, your health, or whatnot. We saw the HUD. The HUD looks good. And it looks like, you know, like the gathering animations and everything from World are definitely going to carry over into Rise. And that's definitely good to see. Um, World was a very optimized game. Not my favorite Monster Hunter by any stretch, which I'm going to talk about my favorite Monster Hunter one of these days. Not my favorite Monster Hunter by any stretch, but as far as quality of life improvements, it definitely, definitely, definitely deserves its praise. Now, that's pretty much it. I didn't watch all the gameplay and shit. I'm like, look, if we're not talking about specifically new stuff, I don't want to see it. I want to see some, like, if almost, I want to see some new monsters. I want y'all to actually talk about the new stuff. It's like, okay, oh, 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 look at this. You're we're watching some hunter, somebody playing the game, and it's like, oh, we're seeing them do shit. It's like, okay, like, 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 like let me see a spotlight of some moves and some shit like that. Um, but yeah, not bad. Just saying. Um, it was light, but like I said, I'm kind of glad so that I can get on with my shit. But anyway, that's going to do it for this section of the video. Next, we're actually getting to the meat and potatoes of the feature that I want and the monsters that I want. All right, now for the meat and potatoes of my wants. Um, see, I told y'all that I, there was a feature that I really want back that probably isn't coming back. And I was going to save that for later as like the big ta-da of this whole thing. But I came to the realization that that isn't, that a lot of my picks for monsters kind of rely on this feature. So I kind of can't shy away from it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you up front. I started Monster Hunter back in 2010. It was my senior year in high school. I'll never forget that. It was, it was spring of my senior year in high school. And got the game, and I fell in love with it. Now, if you play that game, you know what's coming. The main draw of that game, um, ever since the third generation, Monster has kind of been trying to add a little something to the hunts to make them a little more palatable. You have mounting and everything that was introduced in, Mon- in the fourth generation, Monster Hunter 4 and Monster Hunter 4G, or 4 Ultimate, as they were called, you know, adding, adding verticality to the hunts. Then Monster Hunter World added more lush environments and kept with the kept with the verticality, you know, just polished everything out. Generations were adding a lot of flair and shit in the um, vein of Hunter Arts and things of that nature, you know, just continuing off the verticality, not taking it to the degree to which World did. My favorite Monster Hunter generation is the third, and one of the features that I loved about Monster Hunter Three Ultimate was the ability to swim. In those games, you there were a lot of aquatic monsters that had to be fought underwater. Now a lot of that, now a lot of them, if not all of them, were like kind of semi-aquatic. So you could fight them on land, but the fight would really open up on uh, once the battle took to the water. An underwater hunt would allow you to hunt in 360 degrees. Now me, yet again, remember, I'm I'm a sword and shield man. So, like, sometimes getting to a monster's horns or getting to its back may not be possible for me on land. But as soon as that big motherfucker jumps in the water and all 360 degrees of movement are opened up, that's a different story. So I like like to see that come back. Now, yet again, I realize that's probably not going to happen. Reason being is that it looks like this game is yet again playing off the verticality and being able to climb anywhere like a ninja does. Um, so I really feel as though this isn't going to come back, but I don't think there's like a zero chance, but I think they're more interested in the verticality of Monster Hunter, like adding that vertical element and really making the world feel alive in that respect, you know, being airborne and shit of that nature rather than underwater. But, you know, hey, we all have seen those little like part like ninja parodies, ninja anime, ninja movies where the ninjas will be underwater hiding. So, and then, you know, we've seen a little bit of water in Monster Hunter Ride, the Rise trailers. So, um, definitely, definitely want to see it. Um, in Monster Hunter World, there were two, well, 
there were three Piscine wyverns, but in, in particular, the great mudfish, or as he was actually named, as what I call him, Juratotos. Juratotos was a bitch. Not gonna lie. Juratotos was not hard to fight because, yeah, he fought in the water, but that water was so shallow, it kind of limited the monster in regards of it's the way it could move. I believe that if we, like, we had to fight that thing in like a lake, that fight would have actually been hard because it would have been able to move out of the way um, of your attacks, go above you. It can, it could go below you, but still, like be, but actually being able to freely, instead of swimming through mud, swim through actual water and come at you that way, especially if the water was kind of murky, make the water murky, you know, um, take away your sight, you know, your, your 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 range of sight, your visibility, and really get into, get to the fight that way. I think that would have made Jurotos a hell of a lot more fun of a fight. I love its armor, but that fight's too fucking easy. Like, yeah, like, that's how I farmed Wyvern Jim on, on World when it first came out. Like, I just beat the shit out of that thing. But anyway, I do think that, that taking advantage of underwater environments would be really cool. A, because there's a large roster of monsters that are aquatic that could actually take advantage of it. Well, who, who are some of my favorite monsters? And B, I just think it'd be cool. Because especially running off the Resident Evil engine and being world class, yet again, it's not, it's, I don't think it's going to look better than the world, not by any stretch. The Switch isn't as powerful as a PS4 or a 360. Hell, not even going to make, not even the PC, but still. But with these graphics looking like they could, they could at least be in the same spinning distance as world, some underwater environments, think about it. Some tropical islands, you know, you're on an island going through the jungle, then there are some waterways, you can swim in the lakes. Hell, take us back to the flooded forest, take us back to the deserted island. Um, look, where else was there? Were there aquatic? Hell, they have a desert area where underground there's like a, there's like a lake part where you can really, you know, get to it. And I think that'd be really, really nice for us to have some underwater hunts. Um, man, not even just that, like some cool reefs, because um, I've been playing Mario, Super Mario Sunshine and the tropical environment, like, dog, it's, it's just, man, like hunting on a map, like it's broad daylight, you know, you're on an island, there's a coral reef on the other side of the island, you gotta go there, go underwater, there's this new, um, shit, there's this new monster that kind of hides in the coral reef, so you have to fight it underwater, it, it, look, it would just be fucking awesome, and I would love to see underwater hunting make a comeback and really done right, because I know a lot of, a large portion of the community actually doesn't like underwater hunting, I've never understood why. Although I I've I could say that throughout my entire life, like some things that other people find kind of arduous and hard, I find easy. Like even to this day, if I were to bust out my 3DS and my Wii U, I can underwater hunt perfectly. It's just, it's just not that hard to me, cause I, cause I guess cause I was molded in it. I guess that's why I can do it a little better than most. And even some people, even some people who I used to hunt with, they used to say, like, "Bro, I love underwater hunting. I love underwater hunting." And then, you know, uh, even, you know, going forward, even if it's not on Rise, it's on some other game. With new technology, being able for the monsters to be able to move the way they do, the hunters move the way they do, more more fluidity in, in motion should theoretically make moving in a 360 degree space way easier and, and more palatable to the average player. Um, so I definitely think, you know, graphically, some underwater environments would definitely definitely make um for some more diverse environments definitely make for some oh and even a tundra level uh a tundra area where you're hunting underwater you know you have to take on some new seal like monster under the ice i think it, i think it'd be great but yeah that's kind of a big thing about me wanting underwater hunting back and um, so that's, you know, I just had to get that out of the way because I noticed like a bunch of the picks of the monsters that I want back are actually part of the aquatic class. They are all aquatic, but most of the, I believe most of their members are actually aquatic monsters. And that is the Leviathan glass. Now, yet again, a lot of you, especially those who started in world, don't know what a, don't know what a Leviathan is. 
Leviathans are a class of monster with, are, are a class of monster that normally have slender bodies, and they they move they have swim they have fluid movements they swim like even some of the some of the um leviathans that don't necessarily swim they have um very slender bodies and they and like they kind of slither not well kind of like snakes but we'll get to them later um but yes they they normally have very fluid motions and most of them are aquatic in nature um and yes, I think bringing back underwater hunting would actually allow us to bring back um, the Leviathan class. And not only that, I know that in World, um, there were some problems because people saw uh, Lagiacris or Lagia, or Lagia Cruz. I say Lagiacris, my favorite monster of all fucking time. Um, they saw him going against the Anjanath in one of the early, like, or some of the early footage. But then when the game came out, he wasn't there. And people were like, why, why, why? And they would say, hey, you know, we weren't able to, and, and speaking, of, speaking as the monster team, they were like, hey, you know, there were some problems with him being, a, with, with a monster like that being implemented. Um, so that's why Leviathans were cut out. And that's why a large part, a large part of this um, video is going to be me wanting monsters that aren't the normal monsters that we got, that aren't part of the classes that we got in the world. Because in the world, we got a couple of fang wyverns, mostly flying wyverns. Of course, we got the elder dragons and shit and brute wyverns but as far as like a diverse class of monsters we stayed away from um snake wyverns leviathans neuropterans and i think there was another one another class of monster that we kind of stayed away from but that's what this video is pretty much going to be about um me just going over some monsters from the different classes that some y'all haven't seen now yet again i do have a couple of like um flying wyverns that i want um i think as far as brute wyverns we pretty much got like all of them covered in world but yeah underwater hunting definitely want to see it back all right and coming right off of my want of underwater hunting we're gonna start with some underwater monsters and i'm gonna try to kind of switch it up but um if i don't i'm gonna just do a whole bunch of underwater monsters and then the land-based ones because yet again even though like i said in monster Hunter world and iceborne there were a bunch of flying wyverns and shit even though it was they were stacked to the brim with those. There are a couple that didn't make it in that I really, really, really want to see. But anyway, starting off first is gonna be my favorite monster of all time. And it ain't even close. There's no monster that I love like this monster. And that's gonna be Lagiacris. Excuse me, or Lagia Cruz, you call him. I call him Lagiacris. And man, oh man, the things I could say about this monster. I could wax lyrical about the king of the seas, the depths lightning, who is Legacris. Um, Just to give you a brief explanation of, of what Legacris is, if you're not watching the video, which I should have, um, the intro and some uh, clips of gameplay uh, playing on the screen right now. Legacris is the flagship monster of Monster Hunter Tri, 3 Tri, um, and it earned that title. It's one. It's a fan favorite for a reason. Lagiacris is a semi-aquatic monster. It is a leviathan. Like I said, leviathans are, are mostly aquatic. There are a couple of leviathans that aren't aquatic, and we'll get to them in a, in later on in the video. But Lagiacris is an, is an aquatic monster whose element is lightning. Now, Lagiacris has been in Monster Hunter games since then, uh, after Tri-G. It wasn't present in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, but it made a return in Monster Hunter Generations and Generations Ultimate. Now, the thing is, they can bring Lagiacris back without underwater combat, but, and I've said this with my friends, and I guess now I'm putting it on wax, um, Lagiacris without water just ain't right. Reason being, Lagiacris on, on, on land... And even then, in Generations Ultimate, they tried to give Legiacris a bit of a some 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 new moves to kind of make up for the fact that it can't move as well on water, as well on land as it does in water. But even then, those moves were superficial at best. Like I think even playing Generations Ultimate to this day, I still rarely, if ever, die from Legiacris due to its limited movement options. But get that thing in the water, and it is smooth as the cream cheese on your bagel. Um, the reason I want Legacy's back is like I love its design it itself, and then the design of its armor, its G rank armor, is still some of my favorite 
equipment today. Uh, to date, like out of all of the world monsters, generations of ultimate uh, for you monsters, I think that that's still like my favorite armor set. Um, but yes, having it back would definitely be something that I I would look forward to because it's a it's a challenging hunt, especially underwater. Um, it has moves where it can cloak itself in lightning and then then kind of barrel itself at you. Um, its tail swipes just the just the way it can, it can move it can move back then, and now with the fluidity of motion with the hunters and the monsters, I believe that they could definitely do do something more with it and make Legikris a far more challenging foe. Um, but yeah, Legikris is just it's it's an awesome monster and it's a fan favorite. That's why like when that demo footage of Legiacris being a world was shown. It was like, oh man, yeah, we're gonna hunt Legiacris. There's there's a reason. Like if you never fought, if you if you listen to this and you never fought a Legiacris in water, I would definitely say if you have the means, pick up a 3DS or a Wii U and pick up Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and definitely hop definitely hop in that bitch and see about Legiacris. And that's it for Legiacris. Or is it? Now, along with Legiacris, um, are its subspecies and its rare species. Next, I'm going to talk about its rare, not, well, not its rare species, that's going to be after this, its subspecies, the ivory Legiacris. Now, as the name implies, it's a white Legiacris. Where normal Legiacris, it has a, like a flesh tan colored underbelly, blue scales on the top of it, and then its horns and its, uh, well, its horns are orange. In fact, the um, ivory variant, well, not it's not a variant, it's a subspecies. I, I know that's a thing, but it's a subspecies, not a variant. Its subspecies has, yet again, the, the white flesh color, well, the flesh color or, or tan, tannish, or even lighter underbelly with a white, with white scales on top with blue crystals. Like, it's like his horns and shit are blue. So, there's that. Now, the, the thing about ivory Ligiacris is, A, its lightning attacks are stronger than, than a normal Ligiacris. B, it is actually more adept at land combat. So such as a snap and drag, where it can like, kind of like turn itself completely around on like a dime and get, get to you that way. And, and a lot of the, um, the thunder attacks it would do on land. Now, it can still um, operate in water, but it's more so designed to... Fight to fight on, but but it's more inclined to fight on land, um, and even without fighting on land, it's still it's still a danger even water or land. It's it, it's more. It, I tell you, if the original Gearcrest was like sixty percent land, sixty uh, percent water, forty percent land. I the Ivory Gearcrest is actually sixty percent land, forty percent water, where it can still do those same lightning attacks in the water to kind of you know get to get you on in the water. It's more geared towards land combat, and there's not really is not a lot to say about it. It's still awesome. The white armor, yet again, it's the same as I with the swap color, color palette, and then I think that armor, at least in three U, it had blight proof, and I think it had an attack up, which yet again, dope skills and armor. But yeah, just a dope ass, just a dope ass monster with a dope ass subspecies. Now, um, to kind of round this off. I'm going to go ahead and go into the Abyssal Legiacris. Now, unlike the others, this one is 100% water. And the I think it's I think it's one of the only monsters to truly be distinguished as kind of well well it's it's one of how can hold up trying trying to get more words here people. It's not an Elder Dragon. It's still a Leviathan but it's treated at like an elder dragon, which means it cannot be captured. Um, I think it's one of the first non-elder dragon monsters to ever be treated like that. that like you can't capture it under any circumstances. It's fought in an underwater arena and that and so it's a completely 100% underwater fight. Now this one is a doozy because where the others, like I said, they, they, they have land-based combat. This one doesn't. On top of, and before we even go into that, like, look at this thing. I used it for the thumbnail, but I, I'm, I'll probably put a picture of some gameplay up right now. The fucking thing is black and blue. It's it's got a black it's got a black body with blue horns, and then on top of that, the damn thing has black lightning coming off of it. 
It's like, who the fuck does not want this? It's just so fucking beautiful. Now, yet again, this thing and its equipment, yet again, black and blue, it's fucking dope. It'd be cool to like to have, like yet again if underwater hunting were to come back, like just to have this thing again and to get some to get some up an upgraded look to the equipment. And same same thing for all of the gear, the gear Chris, their gear, except for the weapons. Keep the weapons like they are. The weapons are awesome. And if you and if you do add another, you know, a beta set, have the old ones be the alpha set and the new ones be the beta set, because you can't fuck up this equipment. But yeah, um, just the fact this thing gives off black lightning is it's one of the more challenging fights. Even it's um, we can change because normally Legacris they're all with the fire. Well, the other two are, are, have a distinct weakness to fire. This one has a distinct weakness to dragon and nothing else. Um, and yet again, you're at its mercy underwater where it is definitely at home. And that's pretty much it for my favorite monster, the Gigas, the Ivory Gigas, and the Abyssal Gigas. Definitely, 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 Capcom, if you're hearing this, I want them back. Like, man, baby, come back. You can hunt all on me. But anyway, that's that's going to be this portion for the gear, Chris. Yeah, again, it's just a dope monster. I hope you've been enjoying the um, gameplay and pictures I've been putting on screen. It's, it's they're, they're just really dope monsters, and I would really love to have them back. And the next monster that I'd actually like for them to add back, yet again, assuming underwater hunting is an option, which I'm really hoping for, but I'm not trying to get my hopes up too high, is the Gobel. Now, the Gobel, which I have on screen, is another aquatic leviathan that actually makes, like, it's it's a, it's a kind of a strong fighter, but I think the Gobel more so, it it's a trickster. It's pretty much Tsutsuyaku before Tsutsuyaku was a thing. Hell, I've got Tsutsuyaku existing. Never made a song. I might want to do that. Anyway. Um, but yes, it hides underwater using the whiskers on its face, trying to make them look like, you know, there's some more um, marine life, you know, marine, mar- marine uh, flora. And when you go past it, it'll actually open its giant mouth and then try to eat you. Also, it's kind of, it's kind of like it has an anglerfish's um, bowl, so it can flash you. So it can flash you underwater, it can flash you out of water, and it also can absorb. Uh, it can take in air and water to make the spikes on its body protrude and roll over you. It's a pretty interesting fight, and just just a fun fact about um, Gobel, it was my first wall, like the first monster that I just could not see myself getting past. And I still remember I, I had a, a Quirrell Peco, uh sword and shield. Um, and I knew I had to beat it. And I, all in, I was like an inch from dying when I did. But yeah, it's just a cool, it, it, it is a pretty cool looking monster. It's not the coolest looking monster ever. And yet again, even in, even in G-rank fights, it was never really a problem once I got used to it. But still, it, it's an interesting fight. And I believe with with the new movement, the new style of Monster Hunter, I believe that, that given underwater combat, I believe Gobel could shine, and I believe that it could be a really interesting fight, and something that that'll give some new some uh, new new hunters hell. And its sword and shield was one of my favorites. Um, it all of its stuff has paralyzed element, and it has some pretty dope gear too. Um, but yeah, Gobel Gobel some is a monster that I would really really like to come back if possible. Yet again, underwater hunting being the um being the um condition there. All right. In order not to Moss Hunter 3 Ultimate y'all to fucking death, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Instead of 3 Ultimate, we're going to go ahead to 4 Ultimate. Now, as many people know in the West, um, we didn't get the base Moss Hunter 4. We just got 4 Ultimate, the enhanced version. And in that, at least in the West, that was where one of my favorite types of monsters first came about. And one of my, and my favorite monster of that generation came to be. Najarala. Now, Najarala is belongs to a snake wyvern class, which is exactly like it was. Is it which is exactly like it sounds. They're snakes, giant snakes. Um, the Najarala is big as shit, and it's, I believe, design wise, it's based off the the Quetzalcoatl of um, Latin American. Well, like uh, not Latin American. Well. 
ancient Mesoamerican, uh, not Mesoamerican. That's that's act, that actually be more American. Anyway, you you know what I'm talking about, like the Mayans, the Aztecs. They believe they you know worshipped one of their one of their guys was Quetzalcoatl. Anyway, except this except uh, Nadrala can't fly. But one of the biggest um, draws of Nasrallah was its cry. Things loud as hell. And even along its body, especially its head, it has like a crest. They, they're they pretty much scales, but they look like hardened feathers um, from a distance. It has a lime green body with some orange accents. And even its tail is looks like a big crest. Um, the thing about snake wyverns and the way they move, like like I said, they move like snakes, and they they will wrap around your ass and suffocate you. Now, Najarala, I really miss fighting. It's one of my favorite monsters to fight. It's just a fight itself, and especially like the end, like the intro movie, which should be playing when you're watching this, is nuts. This thing just comes out of nowhere, beak, and just like stares at you and just tries to destroy you. Now, it, now its ability was getting in sound. Um, those crests and scales that look like feathers, that it would rattle, like, like, like it, it would rattle those as, as it fought you and also fire them. And to a certain, and they'd fire them and, you know, if they didn't hit you, it'd be like, okay, they didn't hit me. But if you stand around them, it'll start rattling the, the, rattling the ones that it didn't fire off and they'll explode. And it can even fire, fire like a sonic cannon at you of just pure sound. Now, um, as far as the armor goes, really, I really love the armor for this thing um, because in Monster Hunter World, when I first started playing that, it kind of took me by surprise because the monsters' roars were getting me. I'm like, damn, I know I used to deal with monster roars. Like, why, why am I having such a hard time? Reason being, because um, like normally when I get comes to Monster Hunter game, I choose a monster. With three of you, it was um, Legiacris, that species. To be like my main armor for you, it was Nadrala, and even the world and Iceborne, it was Legiana and Shrieking Legiana. Those like the main monster armors that I use. Now, Nadrala, one of the staples of its armor is earplugs. So for a whole generation, like you know, I I, I pretty much uh, early game for you, I grind. It's like so get Nadrala, grind its armor out, boom, that'd be the main armor I wear. So I have to upgrade it. Same thing in mass rank, up it with G rank. I make a G rank armor, did it in low rank, high rank, blah, 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 whatever. So I was kind of like not used to handling monster wars. But anyway, it's just a cool fight. You'll, you'll, you'll see, you know, it, you'll see it on the screen. It's just a dope ass monster in and of itself. Also, it has subspecies, the title Nadrala, which was fought in the frozen seaway. Now, same thing pretty much as a loud ass snake, except it was its color palette was different, which I would I would try to show you on screen. It was blue, purple, yellow, and I think it had some greens in it. But anyway, now instead of just sound being it was still a loud monster, but instead of sound being its main thing, what it would do, it would spread its scale all over the battlefield and then shoot a water ball at you. And if it missed, if it hit a scale, it would bounce around. So it was making better. So it was making better use of its of its scales to take like a tactical advantage, which will make a hunt very interesting. And like I said, same thing with with Nadrala, same thing I said with every other monster. With monster Hunter, with the new engines that monster hunters are being made on, I think especially for snake wyverns, their their movement could could be just insane, and that's something I love. Because um, yet again, world was very. Vanilla kind of sort of when it came to monsters due to the engine, due to they being new technology, which I completely understand. Not gonna look it's cause, just because world I don't like world as much three you and four you doesn't mean I'm gonna shit on it, but it, it was a thing. But yes, Nadrala and title Nadrala, if possible, I definitely want to see them back. Now this is one of those things I think is a little more realistic. Underwater hunting, honestly, I don't think we're getting it back. I hate that it's probably like that, but I don't think it's happening. But Narjarala, I definitely think there's a chance we, we could we could be seeing Narj, and y'all could and y'all could know how it is to fight a snake wyvern. All right, next, taking a little break from underwater because I know I've fucking underwater jaw to death so far. But surprisingly, it's going to be a bird wyvern, Kurupeko. Yet again, making its debut in Monster Hunter Three Try, Kurupeko is a bird wyvern with a little bit of a special ability. Now, back in Monster Hunter 3, um, the base game, not Ultimate, uh, Monster Hunter 3 Try, 
um, they introduced what was called stability for the for the regions. So from what from what I'm told, because I didn't play Monster Hunter one one and two, you know those Monster Hunter anything before Try I've never played substantially I, I should say, but stability was a new um, little sub feature that they added in Monster Hunter Try. Um, because before that, you know, if a monster wasn't listed in the quest, you wouldn't see it. But at that point on, they started making it so that other monsters had a chance to appear. Now, where Pool Peckle comes in, pretty much when you would start beating it, it would call other monsters. Like, like think of its. Well, it had its own distinct cry, but when but it would do a dance and. Oh, it, this thing is just weird because I just remembered something, but I'm going to keep going on this thought and then we're going to get to that. When you would start beating it, and not necessarily when it was when it was losing the fight, just to fuck with you, this thing, it, it would do a dance and then it would call something. So imagine this little, it's not a tiny bird by any means. It's, it's actually kind of, kind of a big bird. But imagine the Devil Joe, who was also a Monster Hunter 3 monster, Imagine that thing's cry, that thing's deafening roar coming out of a cruel peco's mouth. Same thing for the Jaggy, who were some of the little bird wyverns. Wherever it was, it would call other monsters, and it would call Rathian, Rathlos, Devil Joe, um, little minion monsters. It could call anything. And I just think that would be really dope um, for you to be beating beating up on it in the shrine, and then it called Magna Malo, Tetradon, Izuchi or any of the other monsters that that might be um in the game. I think they'd be cool. Now another thing that I just that I just remembered was the dance. Now the way Corpeco would fight, it's like its claws on its wings are flintstones. So it was so it would it would dance around and then it would start knocking its hands together in order to to um light, 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 to light you on fire. Goodness. But beyond that, it could, it could also dance, sing, and buff itself. It could do a healing buff, an attack buff, a defense buff. Like I said, it could also call other monsters. And the good thing about that is if you if you were to interrupt it, if you were to be able to stun it while it was doing that, you would get the buff. And I think that's, that'd, be, that'd be really cool um, for that monster, you know, especially for like a master slash G rank, because they're probably going to just keep you a master rank from now on. Like if you're fighting like, like a Devil Joe or some shit, this thing comes and starts like dancing in the corner like a damn like a bad hunting horn user. It just starts buffing the devil joke or whatever, or whatever you're fighting. But beyond that, it's just a re- it's just a really cool fight. And then it has a subspecies, the Crimson Core Peco, that does the same thing. Except its Flintstones are more light crystals. Well, they're actually like light crystals, I believe they are, and it and it does electricity and it has a red color palette. But yeah, Core Peco, really interesting monster. Not the hardest monster. If you think I'm like, oh man, I want the hardest monsters. Um, no, not necessarily, because Corpeco is definitely not a hard monster at all. But it does have some interesting mechanics, and I haven't fought it in a long time, and I think it'd be cool to have back. Alrighty, now we're gonna get back on the Leviathan, except this is a Leviathan that isn't aquatic. Mizutsune. It came about in the fourth generation, uh, first introduced in Monster Hunter Generations. Mizutsune is one of the Faded Four. Um, a lot of you who played World who fought Glavinus didn't probably probably wouldn't know this, but Glavinus is part of a four monster set called the Faded Four. They are collectively the flagship monsters of Monster Hunter Generations Generations Ultimate. Now, Mizutsu, now you could say that they each represent an element. Glavinus being fire, as you would know, and Mizutsune would represent water, being its polar opposite. Whereas Glavinus is very straightforward and very aggressive. Mizutsune is more flowing. Now, Mizutsune, of course, you can see, you hear Mizu, the word, the Japanese word for water, in the title. It is a why it is a leviathan, but it looks more like a beast. It's it has like white, pink, purple fur. Um, and it's very furry. Well, it's, of course, it's, it's furry, and it has like a dragon-like face. But the rest of it, it's like a dragon, quote unquote, mixed with a fox. Now, Mizutsune, the way you fight it, um, it moves a lot, and also, it uses bubbles to fight. Pretty much, it sprays bubbles, and these bubbles don't just cause water blight. They, well, they don't cause water blight at all. They call they have a bubble status, which, as time goes on, if you get hit with a bubble and you don't either cleanse it or, you know, jump and roll around and wipe it off, 
you'll start slipping around to the point where you can't even draw your weapon because your um, character is going to be waving their arms while they go all over the place. Now, Mizusune does have other water attacks, such as a water jet, where it will kind of like, well, yeah, like all, all, all uh, like a la Treon and um, Betalus, where it'll like sweep the entire area with a beam of water. But like I said, that isn't the worst of it. And I believe if if hit by water while you have bubble status, it's going to cure it. Now, the bubbles are, are really cool because not only do you can, like, they don't hurt you at all. Like, like they'll, like, they'll, like, you'll, your character will move when hit by it. Like, they're like, buh. They're like, oh, I was hit by something. But they can also give out buffs. Green bubbles will give health, and red bubbles will help, help with your attack. Now, remember, just because the, the bubbles are a different color, they will still hurt you. But yeah, um, a, as you can tell by the, um, the trailer that's playing on screen right now, that the bubbles, like those, like those bubbles, like when that thing wants to spread those bubbles, it'll spread them everywhere. Um, and yet again, it was already a very movement heavy monster in Monster and Generations, Generations Ultimate. So I'm hoping now that we're on a better engine like that, like its movements can be even better. The next is going to be another Neuropteran. Um, the Hermitor, the Daimyo Hermitor and the Plum Daimyo Hermitor. The Red Crab, well, the Daimyo Hermitor, which is a regular species, is a Red Crab kind of monster, and the Plum Daimyo Hermitor is like a purplish, a plum color. Now, the crabs, they normally strafe, and they shoot water at you, the water monsters. Now, we've never fought them underwater, which yet again, if I know our hunting comes back, I'd love to fight them underwater and see if that would add some new dimension to it. But under normal circumstances, the way they're fought is, you know, hermit, hermit crabs, they'll use damn near anything, even shells and shit that aren't their own, for their homes. Now, the hermitors, instead of just using shells or hollow out rocks or anything like that to make their homes, they use monster skulls. I believe... Hermitor uses actually a monoblow skull. It's like a Diablo sip of one horn and the horns on its nose. But it'll use that um, to kind of hide itself. And then it'll burrow underground and it'll come up shell first. So if it has a. And you can see from the trailer it's playing um, as I'm talking. It'll come up and, and, it, and it'll use that to attack. And they also have a tendency to jump up high and slam down on you. They're, they're just really cool monsters. Um, I'd love to see them yet again with the new movement options. I think they could be really great. And if underwater hunting comes back, I think fighting some crabs underwater would be pretty freaking cool. All righty, next we're going to do a flying wyvern, but not a flying wyvern like we've seen in, at least in the world. Like I said, if you come from the world, you've never seen this monster. Giganox. Giganox are a class of flying wyverns that aren't like what you've seen. They kind of look like slugs with arms and legs. Um, Giganox, I remember fighting the Monster Hunter 3 for the first time, are just fucking weird. They're normal, They're found in caves. You can fight them outside, but they're normally found in caves, and I think that's where they're the most dangerous. They're, they're an ailment monster, poisonous, and they normally spread poisonous gas around the, um, the inside of caves. They crawl around. They body slam you. Um, the thing about Giganox is its head and its tail look the same. So if you're not watching the, the limbs, you you could you could get confused on which which one's actually which. And one of the things that Giganox does is it will lay eggs from its tail, and from those egg sacs, whatnot will come its baby form, Gigi, which will start to you know latch on to you, drain your blood, and just be an all-around nuisance. Like if you're charging up a charge swing, if they, if they hit you, they can hit you out of it. Um and they're just really annoying. Giganox really want to see back because in the world, we never really got any of, like, the weirder monsters. Like, there's also a monster, Kizu, who's, who didn't make the video. I I kind of fuck with Kizu, but I know Gigalox not, Giga, Giganox a lot better, so Kizu's kind of is not, isn't on this list. But um, Giganox, really cool. Like, and then it has a subspecies, the Baneful Giganox, which is yellow, um, which uses paralysis and electricity. But yeah, they'll, like, Giganox, they'll hang from the ceiling, they'll throw... Um, depending on which, whether it's the regular species or the subspecies, they'll throw poison, electricity, they'll try to swallow you whole. It's just a good time. I love seeing them. Enhanced movement should make this a really dope fight. You know the drill. Alright, next, gonna do another 180. Nursella. 
Priscilla is a Neuropterin, which if you watch my discussion video, I describe Neuropterins as insectoid monsters, which I know insects and arachnids are different things, but yet again, it's a Neuropterin, it's an insectoid-like monster, we're just going to keep it moving. But Nersilla, Nersilla and its subspecies shrouded Nersilla. Now, we do have that new Neuropterin in the video, but, but besides the fact that it can retract its head and shit, we have no other um, information on it so far, so we're just going to talk about Nersilla. Nasilla are spider-like monsters. Um, as you can see on screen, they are quite sneaky. They use webs. They're like real-life spiders, except big as shit and kind of annoying. And they use multiple um, ailments. Like, like these aren't element monsters. They're ailment monsters. Um, one of the... Because it has two retractable mandibles that are big and long that will poison you. Or it can hit you with a stinger, which I believe puts you to sleep. But either way, Nersilla's really cool. Um, they jump around a lot. They swing. They use their webs to kind of keep, keep you in place while they, you know, try to wrap you up. They, they can, say, shoot by webs, wrap you up from a distance, pull you across the mat. Just really cool monsters. A really fun fight. And yet again, I'm really hoping with this new engine that we're on, they can be brought to, like, a new level. Because, you know, yet again, my, monsters in previous games were kind of stiff. But now that we can, like, open that up, It'll be really cool to see what they can do with Nersilla. Um, and then the same thing with Trout Nersilla. It's more desert-based. Uh, fighting, fighting either one of them in a forest, like a densely wooded forest, would be really cool to see what they can do. Like, um, it'd be cool to see if they like like they could set up traps. Um, like I know the trap door spiders uh, give us subspecies or have another Neuropter that can do that. But really, to to us to get the full spider experience, it'd be really cool, and I really hope to see them. Next is going to be a fanged beast, I believe it is, Gameth. Now, Gameth, which sounds like mammoth, is another one of the Faded Four representing ice. It is a giant mammoth that is known to inhabit tundra areas. And of course, all monster hunters have the tundra area, whether it be in the base game or the expansion, like it was in Iceborne. Um, Gameth is just a fun fucking fight. It's just so fucking big. Like, that's just the thing about it. It's just so damn big. It can use its, its um, tusks. Well, not its tusks, because its tusks are really kind of fucking useless. But it can use its trunk to suck you in from across from across the map and then slam you. And whenever it, like, grabs you, it'll just slam you on the ground, which is really cool. Um, like I said, it's just it's just big. It's woolly. It's cool. Its armor's pretty cool. Hell, its armor's got a skill where if you drink a cold drink in the cold, it'll buff you. Um... But yeah, it's just a really, really cool monster. It's big as hell. Like, as you can see from the trailer it's playing as you're watching this, it's fucking huge. It just is, man, and it's awesome. I love fighting it. Um, especially if you use an aerial style. Um, yeah, but yet again, especially with some more wide open areas and um, yet again, the new movement options. I'm going to new movement options, y'all, to death. But yeah, just making use of a new engine to make an old monster feel like new again um yeah it's just a really big really cool monster and i'd love to see it i'd love to see its armor i'd love to see its skills i'd love to see it love me some gameth man i don't know what it is i just love gameth okay, next on the list is gonna be astalos astalos is the final member of the faded four representing lightning astalos is just, is just really cool um yeah, it's just a it's just a dope ass flying wyvern. It kind of looks like it's supposed to be mixed with a bug. Um, its armor is really cool. I guess its sword and shield is a rapier. Um, and even then, its deviant species um can make it, it uses blue electricity instead of the green electricity that the normal one uses, and it can use that as to like affect gravity. But yeah, Osloth, it's really aggressive. It's really cool. It's I don't, know what else, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, it's just really dope. And then it has like a scissor tail, which it can like stab you and and um use the electricity to paralyze you. It's just, it's just really cool, man. Like, there's not a lot I can say about Asloth, but if you fought Asloth, you like fighting Asloth. It's really aggressive. It has great gear. It's fucking awesome. Alrighty, this last little bit is gonna be a two for one involving elder dragons two elder dragons who i want to see in monster hunter rise the most the first is going to be camellios now it's funny because in monster hunter world they had um a set of quests where you fought three elder dragons 
Tielstra, the Dragon of Fire, Kusador, the Steel Dragon, the Dragon of Wind, and Valstrax. No, well, not, well, not Valstrax, excuse me, Valhazak. Their names sound, sound kind of familiar. Okay, and everybody's like, oh man, you know, they're a trio, and, Val, and Valhazak is the third one. He isn't. The true third is Camellios, the Elder Dragon of the Mist. Now, as the name suggests, and as you're watching, Camellios is based off of a chameleon. And boy, is this fight fucking fun. Now, one thing I like about Camellios and what I and why I really want him back is he's a chameleon. And you know what chameleons are known for? Changing colors or turning invisible. Camellios will turn invisible during the fight and make himself harder to see. Now, in older games, you know, you had that kind of clear outline. You kind of see him a little bit, but man, it's still fucking fun. And sometimes he completely, he completely disappear. And what he'd do is often when he would he would disappear, he would spread mist. Like he has an organ inside him where he can either spread like water vapor as mist or as poison. He would use a poisonous mist to kind of cover up his movements. And also he uses his tongue to kind of steal, well, not kind of, but his tongue to steal items from you and you, you wouldn't get them back. Yet again, another really cool monster. Um, I love his gear. It's kind of like just gesturish, and who knows? Like they could, like maybe redo it. Um, Camellios is, is one of those. He has some of that gear, which I'd be like, mm, I think they could probably tweak tweak his gear a little bit. Um, definitely, because it's not as cool. I don't think it's as cool as it could be. But yeah, Camellios is really cool, and with those new, with new, the new the option to make him move better and more fluid, I think it'd be really great. And with the invisibility, the technology to make him truly, truly invisible and fight you is amazing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Camellios. Not a lot to say, but just like as you can see, the trailer is playing on the screen. Fighting this motherfucker in a cave would be amazing. Him using mist and like a poison mist, it's just awesome. And also, he sounds like a fucking chicken. Like, I've never understood that. Like, why does he, he's like, Whoa! like And like, this is supposed to be an elder dragon, a dragon that can't be captured, a dragon that is pretty much a calamity by itself, sounding like a fucking hen. But I still like it. Now, this next part is going to be for a more recent monster, one that came out right before World. In Monster Hunter, making his, making his debut in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, Valstrax, the Ardent Wyvern. Well, the Ardent Dragon. As you can see from what's playing on the screen right now, this is a doozy. When he flies, he uses his wings like jet turbines, and he comes at you like this is such a fun fight. Like, it's ridiculous how fun this fight is. Because when he lands and he's fighting you, he can use his wings like appendages. Like, he uses, he pretty much uses them like dual lances. Like, he, like he'll try to stab you with them. He'll, he'll flip one out, and then he'll spin with it, like, you know, kind of like how a longsword user would do. It's just fun. And even then, he uses dragon energy. Like, like that stuff that's coming out of his, coming out of his wings it's dragon energy. So pretty much he's using his wings like turbines to propel himself. He'll shoot it at you. And also he'll charge up, fly into the sky, fly around the map, and then come down like a meteor. So it's fucking dope. And his and his armor is cool as shit. Funny enough, this thing is is weak to everything except dragon. And he has a I think it's called Dragon Heart or Dragon Soul, where if you get Dragon Blight, it'll power you up. And I think it's kind of I think it's it can be a meta set in generations. I'm not a, I'm a generations ultimate. I'm not a meta player, so I wouldn't know for uh, specifically. But I have seen a lot of guys running around with dragon blight. Like, like that shit's not a problem. But anyway, that's the elder dragons, and that's pretty much it. These are some of the monsters that I want. I guess you could say these are some of the ones I want the most. Um, there are other monsters. I might do a part two to this. Uh, tell me how. Tell me what you think. Is there anybody who who I did mention that you want? Um, and let me see, is there any feature this is beyond underwater combat that you want to see? Do you like underwater combat? Do you not like underwater combat? Um, tell me your thoughts in the description below. Yet again, this has been your boy, the D20, signing out. See you guys.